Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about these new Hollyland SolidCom C1 headsets. They're a self-contained headset, no belt pack that you can use from your director to your camera operators or anyone else on your team up to five headsets. So here's our worship space that we've been using these in and have had great results, but we've also been using a very similar style unit from EarTech that I'll kind of compare the two at the end of this review and maybe help you decide which you know, budget conscious uh, version to go with. Let's go. All right, guys, so let's break down the Hollyland SolidCom C1 units. If you are doing live streaming and you have live camera operators, you know how important it is to have communication between the director and your camera operators. Now, when we first began, we were doing this just with an old wireless in-ears unit and just like a one-way communication. But the great thing about these Hollyland units is that they are called full duplex, which means that it's an open line between the camera operator and the director. So uh, one other thing I like about these units is that they're reversible. I can either wear it on this side of my head and adjust the mic this way, or just for preference wise, you can spin the mic this way and wear it on this side and adjust the boom that way. So these automatically connect together. It comes with four different uh, units, one master set and then three for your camera operators. And they just automatically are paired together. Uh, they are very, very lightweight. And in just a little bit, I'm gonna be comparing them to the EarTech Ultralights because they're extremely similar and we've used those for a couple of years. Um, but these are very, very light. They come in this travel case, which is a, a nice hard case. And it's not super elegant. It's just got some compartments for you to, you know, store your uh, charging bay and your different headsets and cables and things like that. So as far as what you get in this package, you get an eight bay charger with eight batteries, which is great. And then the four headsets with the case and a power cable. You also get some different earmuffs. On this one, I've got the kind of uh, pleathery kind of ear cup that goes over your ear. But by default, they come with these foamy kind of ones that actually sit on your ear. And both are really pretty comfortable. I love that these come with just a rechargeable battery. You just uh, open the little compartment here and you got your tiny little, you know, HL BAT 700 battery. And these are supposed to last about six hours uh, for the camera operators and then maybe a little less for the master headset. So that's plenty of time if you're doing a Sunday morning service. And the great thing is that they come with the four extra batteries that you can just pop in and out the new batteries. So connecting these units together, there's just a little power switch that I will flick on, and then you'll see this little green light shows a signal on the unit there for the master, and then each unit has its own power switch that you can flick on as well, and we'll watch that little green light blink, 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 and now it's connected. On the side of the headset, we just have a volume up and down buttons, and it does kind of give a little response beep there whenever you're changing the volume up and down. And to talk, you just bring this down to your mouth, but when you want it muted, you just swing that up and out of the way, and now you're muted and you can only hear whichever ones have this flicked down like that. So how well do these units stay connected? They operate in the 1.9 gigahertz band. I really don't know that much about wireless stuff. We have lots of things here. We have Unify Wi-Fi. We have five gigahertz uh, HD video transmission systems. We've got lots of handheld mics. Um, and we're in a metal building. So let's just test this range out. I'll walk around the building and see, you know, this is not necessarily line of sight. It's supposed to go up to a thousand feet range and let's just test it out and see if we have any dropouts. Okay, I'm just outside the sound booth and here we go. You're still good. Can you hear me breathing a lot though, I feel like? Just a little bit. All right. So now we're in the corner of the sanctuary, and obviously there's no one here right now, so the interference may be less than usual. But standing right here, we are 
67 feet away, so well within the 1,000 feet. Still sounding normal? You're still sounding normal. All right. So let's just push this thing to its limits, and let's go way down the church. Have fun. All right. So we're going down the kid's wing. These supposedly go up to 1,000 feet. So right now we're at 170. Everything's still sounding good? You're still sounding fine. All right. We are between lots of drywall and lots of classrooms way on the other end of our building now we are 228 feet from our worship center still sounding good you're still sounding fine all right let's go outside and see how good these actually are oh I don't know if it's the one again. Oh, oh, did I lose you? Did I lose you? You there? Okay, I think I've lost you. Disconnect. John. Oh, we got to disconnect. So. John. Connection succeeded. Are you back now, John? I'm back now. Okay, so we're at around 300 feet. That happened, that dropout happened when I went back behind these walls. And maybe it just cut him out. So let's go out these and see if it stays connected now. There's probably less between us actually now. Um, can you still hear me okay? I can still hear you fine right here. Okay, so we're outside. John is in there. And so there's less drywall between us, but we're actually further away now. So now let's continue to test. We're actually probably 300 feet away. And I'm just going to keep walking outside. Oh, goodness. So line of sight, I think, does matter on these. I was thinking maybe it didn't since they were 1.9 gigahertz. But uh, it seemed like when we went behind those walls, it did cut out. And that's more of a, like a real-life um church situation like you're not usually in a big open field so can you still hear me i can still hear you okay we're at 522 feet <clears throat> church is way back over there we're gonna keep going now i guess if you were maybe using these um as like drone operators or something and you needed to talk they would be similar to being this style of setup. All right, we're at 600 feet now. Still sounding good? You're still sounding fine. Okay. So right now we just have brick, classrooms, some glass between us. How's the wind? The wind is pretty strong. Wind is pretty, it's very windy today. 20 mile an hour winds, 30 mile an hour winds. Okay, we are at Oh, 700 feet. Still sounding pretty normal? Still sounding normal. All right, so I'm at the edge of our parking lot. This is way further than we would ever use this. So I'm going to say line of sight. You could probably do up to what they're saying, the 1,000 feet. But um, just be aware that if you have lots of obstructions between you, you might ish get some of those dropouts. I did like that it said, did it tell you disconnected? I did not hear disconnected. Okay, on so on mine it said disconnected, and then when I reconnected it told me. So that's kind of cool. All right, so if you clicked on this video, this might be the whole question that you're asking. Between the Hollyland system and the EarTech system, which one should you choose? Now we have been using these EarTechs for about two years now, and they're still going strong for us. Uh, both of these systems have very, very similar specs. The battery life is about the same. Um, the number of things you can connect number of headsets you can connect to just this master is the same before you have to add a hub. Um, they both have the swivel up and down microphone, but what is different about them? So here is my take after using the Hollyland now for just a little bit and after using these for a couple of years. So I would say performance wise, they are pretty equal as far as the range of the systems. In our building, we've had guys roaming through the hallways, going outside with them and both have stayed connected very, very well. 
Um, audio quality is about the same. Neither of them are great. They're kind of like a walkie-talkie cell phone type sound, and they both operate in the same gigahertz band. Uh, durability. I've only had these Hollylands for a couple of weeks, where we've been using these now for years. It's kind of just like very plasticky on the, the ear text, but it's, a, it's hard enough to where I feel like it's sturdy. Um, this earpiece thing feels good when you, or the mouthpiece when you flick it up and down. Uh, we've had no issues with the earmuffs and it's all kind of contained. There's nothing to catch on anything. And so my only fear here with the Hollylands, they kind of feel a little flimsier um, and it's got this exposed wire here that whenever you go up and down, it stretches and I'm just afraid it might be able to be caught on something. But this also feels like nicer technology as far as like the leather headpiece and uh, the ear, the speaker in the ear is supposedly a lot louder for my tech guys when they compared the two, they, they weren't having trouble hearing anything. So that's a bonus for the Hollyland. So durability, I'm gonna have to go with ear tech ear tech just because I've used them for longer, but uh, these look like good units, I'm not sure. Um, I will say that the price consideration is that the ear tech is a little bit cheaper, not much, maybe a hundred bucks cheaper to get the same setup. So the question is, which units am I going to be keeping? Am I gonna be keeping the ear tech ultralights or am I gonna stick with the Hollyland Solidcom C1 units? And I think I'm gonna stick with the Hollylands. Uh, the ear techs have been great. I have no problems about selling those to someone. They're, they're solid, very solid units. You know, the, the ear techs, you can do the dual ear, which is great to get that added volume if you need it. But when you're running cams, you don't necessarily want both ears secluded because, you know, it's nice to have just one ear. That way, if someone's walking behind you and they say, hey, excuse me, I'm trying to get by, you don't have both ears covered. Um, so the added volume of these, my camera operator is saying that these are much more comfortable and lightweight. Those are a benefit. And, uh, you know, I just think it's newer technology. It's a new unit and I'm, I'm very pleased with it. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. I mean, you know, we've got... Huh. It's Velcro. That's kind of cool. Um, so you can't go wrong with either of these units, but I would probably recommend, and I will be recommending from this point on, the Hollyland units. So I'll link all these in the description below. Those will be affiliate links, and if you use them, it's not gonna cost you any more money. It just gives me a tiny little kickback, and I'd appreciate it if you found this review helpful. You know, remember, let's use the tools, that's what they are, and uh, to do what we're supposed to do, and that is to do great things for God's glory. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one.